Good afternoon, FETC friends. Come on, we can do better than that. It is noon, it is time to have fun. Welcome to the biggest user. You get to decide who the biggest user is. I have my friends up here and we're going to show you very quickly, and I mean really quickly, some really cool tools you should be using in your classrooms. And you get to vote which one you would use more. All right, that's so the rules are, all these tools that we're going to show you are free. My, our favorite F word. Secondly, they have to be easy to figure out and work on both platforms. So with that in mind, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Cindy Lane from St. Louis, Missouri, home of the fa famous baseball Cardinals. Anybody? 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 All right, there we go. Good afternoon. I'm David Fisher. I'm from Boca Raton, Florida. Woo! I'm Carol Bros, and I'm from the Villages, Florida. Yay. James Govins from District 207, just outside of Chicago, Park Ridge, Illinois. Uh -huh. And Carlos Fernandez, and I live here in Orange County. All right, so let's get started. The first tool we're going to show you is called Class Flow. It is the coolest tool on the planet. Well, they're going to say it's not, but it's my favorite tool. It, uh, anybody have a Promethean board or a Smart or a PowerPoint? Okay, I, I take that as a yes. What you can do with ClassFlow is, first of all, you sign in, it's free, and then after you get a, a license to use ClassFlow, you can upload your PowerPoints or your Promethean flip charts or your uh, smart notebooks, and you have your own class, and then you have your own deck. I'm going to, I'm going to charge Cindy's cuties, and I'm going to be Jim Croce. And you can have your own slide presentation throughout, oh, why did I, you know what, I logged in, guys, what happened? All right, so you have your own deck of slides you want your students to know, and then you can push them out to the students' Chromebooks or their iPads. They can respond and write on that and then shoot it back to you. So you instantly have assessment if they're getting it, they understand it, and it's free, and it's called Class Flow. It's relatively new and it's very easy to use. If you need any directions on how to use any of these tools, on the side of our website, linky.com slash biggest user, you'll see all of our names. And when you click on our names, you'll see all of our tools with the website, how to use it, videos to understand and enjoy. So my goodie is ClassFlow and my lesson's gonna be here. Someone keeping time? Yep. I'm surprised I've not been pulled off yet. So here is one of my lessons if I want to play it. It's just, a, oh, and you can also share from other people who have made other class flows, so it's not all only yours. So if I share it out with my kiddos, it just looks like PowerPoint, and then you can shoot out your slides to your students. Thank you very much. All right, so I'll admit class flow is pretty cool. However, it's nowhere near as cool as Kahoot. Now, I know there was a huge Kahoot up. I just coined that term. There was a big Kahoot up earlier this week. But here's why I love Kahoot, and it is the easiest way to bring gamification to your classroom. It takes five minutes to create any of the options up there, a quiz, a discussion, or a survey. It gives you formative assessment. When your kids finish taking a quiz, you can download an Excel spreadsheet, color-coded. Green is correct. Red, well, not so correct. When the kids take the quiz, if they get it right, and you want to set it up this way, they get useless cahoots. It's a wonderful scoring system. They cheer for useless cahoots. Can't even buy a cup of coffee with them, but the kids love them. And it gives the correct answer when they get it wrong. So there's instant feedback for your kids. It corrects them. You get a downloadable spreadsheet of the information. At the end, you also have the option to have your kids run through a quick little on-screen survey. Did they like it? Would they recommend it? How much fun was it? It's very cool. You can upload images. You can even upload videos into your questions. So your kids have prompts available that they can use as triggers before they respond. The discussions are awesome. Great if you want to do some online collaboration in your classroom. Set up a book club on here. Surveys if you want a little feedback on what you're doing. Very easy. Two sites to use it. Getkahoot.com is the build site. Kahoot.it or Kahootit is the interface that your kids use. Platform agnostic. Any phone, 
any tablet, any PC, completely web-based. All you need is an internet connection, and you're good to go. So those are the first two. Cindy, are we ready? OK, class flow. Who loves class flow? <laughs> All right, Kahoot. Categories here. So that was collaboration. Next up, we've got produce and publish. Who's got produce and publish? I'm second up. All right. Here you. Go. So um, this is. Uh, I had a very difficult time with this. Absolutely difficult time trying to figure out what it was that I wanted to do here because there's so much awesome stuff. This is brand new, spanking brand new. It's called Sway. Okay. So this is. Uh, if you go to Sway.com, you can definitely go in there. You can use this on any device. It is web-based right now, and eventually it's going to be part of the, uh, I, I believe it's going to be part of the Microsoft Office suite. So what you're doing over here is how many times have you guys done some type of presentation with your students, whether it's Keynote, it's PowerPoint, whatever it is, and then you find out that they spent about 40 minutes on the design side and the images and two minutes on the content, and then they can't explain what they did. Well, what this does, so it kind of flips it completely. For those of you that are uh, a little bit challenged when it comes to design, or you want the students to really focus in on content, here's what you would do. So I'm going to show you kind of a sample sway over here. And I did this one with, um, did a presentation on EdCamps earlier this week. And all I did was I grabbed my content, and as you can see over here, it's nothing more than storyboarding. So it's very easy to go and add different sections, add pictures. This is not necessarily pretty. It is storyboarding. So they can add images. They can grab things from uh, whether it's Bing, Google, YouTube, uh, OneDrive, all these different resources they can bring it in or from their own desktop. So it's a nice way to search. And then once you're done, it creates a nice sway for you. And let's just pretend that this content, they can present from this content. So you can see that the amount of time on images and videos and live videos may be minimal. Let's just pretend that I don't like the way that this looks. I can just remix it. And then it will give me a whole new theme where I can change the colors. And this is, like I said, absolutely brand new, fresh off the press. I want to say it's less than two months old. Once again, it is Sway. It is free. Sway.com. I'm doing some more. And some more is an, on, oop, is an online newsletter. And it is so easy to, to put together. It's a drop and drag. So all you have to do is if you want to add some new stuff, you just go down here and you can just add different things. You go over, oh, I'll do the edit. Uh, you can have different back, backgrounds, so you can edit your flyer. So when you go to edit, you can drop anything in, have any background. So if I wanted to add something, I can add a, a, a text, a picture, an event, an audio file. I can embed. I can make a form. I can look at all the different things here. I, that's a Google Doc in there that I put in there for that. Um, there's all the different things here. You can have different backgrounds. Uh, what's also really cool is after you update your page, what I like about it is that like I said, it's very easy to drop and drag. It works great on mobile devices. You can, it still drops and drag. I managed to edit one on an iPhone. Uh, what's really nice, it has an analytics on the back side. So you can see how much time people spent. You can see where they came from. You can see the locations that they, that they had everything from. So you can see all of that. Um, what's nice is it can be set up as a newsletter so people can subscribe to it so that you can send out your subscriptions. Um, it can be an embedded into your website. It can be all these different sharing tools. You can set as a newsletter and you can get different, vo uh, different votes on it. Um, and you can even do the P word. You can print it. So um, I know. So uh, that is some more, and it's free, and I absolutely love it. All right, so that is our produce and publish section. So time to vote. Which do we like better? Sway? <laughs> some more. <laughs> got it. Go this close. Next this we've close. got Cody. All right, I'm here first. All right, let me see if I can redeem myself. <laughs> All right, so uh, coding. We've got this incredible, you know, hour of code. And you know what I love, and I know you're going to talk more about this, but what I love is the fact that a lot of school districts are not treating this as a one-week event or a one-day event. They're actually taking this year-round. So I wanted to simplify this as much as possible. So this is called Code Monster. So if you do a search for Code Monster, you can find it, but the actual site is called crunchzilla.com. 
and the link is on our presentation. And basically, this is there's pros and cons to this, but this is as simple as it comes. So the, the coding side, the coding language that we're working with here is JavaScript. And what it does is, one of the pros definitely from here is the fact that you can instantly change the code, obviously on the left-hand side, and the students quickly see what happens when you mess with it. So it allows a lot of exploration. So all you have to do is, nice little user interface, click on the green, click on my words, and then it says JavaScript code on the right, this is what it does. See the number 50, can you change that to 150? Sure I can, I can follow instructions. I'm going to change it to 150. All of a sudden, the box changed. You know what? I'm that kid. I'm not even ready to go to the next one. I'm going to change it to 750. And I'm going to go over here. I'm going to change this to um, obviously not that. I'm going to go over here and change this from 75 to 35. And once again, as, as you start clicking all these things, and it starts telling you, hey, try this, two boxes. And I'm just going as fast as I can here. A square. Let's change the number of the square. Let's change the color of the square. So there's incredible, right to the point, easy, follow the directions, change the numbers. And what I love about this, it allows the students to explore. Now, the pros of this is that it's very easy, very quick to get a student to get on here. This is not a one hour, obviously a one hour activity, but definitely a great five minute, 10 minute, you're done with your work, why don't you go over there and show me how to do some JavaScript coding. Cons, there's no save button. So, you know, you have a student that goes really, really far, Eventually, they're going to click and find that spot where they were. Uh, but you can see exactly by down here where you have the, um, the bar, you can see how many events. And I can click on this all day. And you can see how eventually they start coding. I mean, the next step after this would put them, would be to go into some different type of website to learn them how to do a little bit more JavaScript. And I am done. That is Code Monster. Thank you. We're going to start lowering the microphone in just a second <laughs> if you didn't pass off. Okay. So. We move from monsters to birds. Code.org. Code.org is an awesome site. It's great for, and there's the Hour of Code, which is where Hour of Code actually originated from. But here's what I really love about Code.org. You have lessons set up for different grade levels and different experiences with coding. You have for teachers who understand the importance of bringing the concept of coding to their classroom who understand the importance of teaching algorithms and that algorithms are not just for math or science but can be used in any discipline. There are paper pencil lessons you can print off that teach the principles of coding so if you don't have access to a device you could still teach them coding. You can use this with ESE kids. I've used it with ASD kids because there are puzzles where they can snap things together. You are taught mousing skills through this site as well. And as you go through the stages what kid doesn't like to control Angry Birds and Flappy Birds? Because those characters are built into the stages as you go through. There are instructional videos for almost every stage that teach you the piece of code you're going to learn. And then you snap them together and you watch what happens. And you can add as many blocks of code together as you want to make something happen and still get it done and the site will tell you, oh, you know, you did this in 47 blocks of code when you only really needed like five. But, you know, kids like to watch things spin. So it's an awesome site. It's free. You can register for it just to get other information as well as maintain where you are. But even when you're into the stages, there are um, dots that change color to let you know how far along you are. The lessons are awesome. It is a great site to teach coding on and offline with your class. So that is code.org. Right. So, so that's our coding section. Crunchzilla. I'm just gonna lie and tell everybody I won. <laughs> Code.org. <laughs> Next up we have got multimedia. I guess I'll be uh, head off first here. All righty. And I have a site called bfunky.com. Up, where did it go? There it is. All righty. Now, bfunky.com does not require you to log in at all. You can if you want. You can register if you want. Or you can just go ahead and start editing photos. You can capture photos. You can upload them. All you have to do is click Get Started there. It's going to pull up a little box that looks something like this. And it's going to ask you, do you want to bring it from your computer, from Facebook, from your webcam, mobile uploads, etc.? I'm just going to go to 
Cindy's desktop here and grab a capture that I did just a moment ago of a picture we all just took of each other. Uh-oh. Uh-huh. Oh, God. Be nice. I will be. So there we are, right? Very quick, easy, right to, the, right to the point. Now I can do some quick autocorrect here with like exposure settings and things like that, and I can dial these up and down. So if I wanted this to have a little bit more highlight, I could do that, or a little more shadows. And I can, I can really touch up the photo using Be Funky. But then the fun part comes, and there are featured effects as well as... Um, oh, they're both featured effects, I guess. Uh, and so I can start adding things like I want this to be chromatic and I can change how much of this I want to be chromatic. I can come down and do some more fun things like, well, let's say we want a grungy picture. We can do that. And there we go. I can apply that like that. I can take some of that effect amount down pretty easily. And that picture has just transformed a whole lot. Here's my favorite part of it. Let's say that I actually want just a part of this effect. I can switch on my paint mode. I can go into reverse. And I can start saying I want the background not to have the effect, but only us to have the effect. So I can really start to play around with images. Now, the thing that's great about this is how many of you are concerned about copyright and things of that nature, right? We don't want our students just going out and grabbing images off the web and using them for their own work. If you find a Creative Commons licensed image that says with attribution, you can change that file, you can do that. So it's a great way to, uh, to make sure that you're not breaking copyright by doing that and changing it up just a bit. And I'm out of time. Can that make me look skinnier? Can I make you look skinnier? Probably. 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 I want to talk about that too. So in the vein of multimedia, I'm showing a tool called Ed Puzzle. Does anybody use videos in their classroom for learning? I want to see more hands. All right. So whether you like YouTube, TeacherTube, Net Geo, whatever, this is Ed Puzzle, where you can go in. Where is it? Is it there? Yes. So I signed in. I'm going to go home. And what you can do is you can make your own uh, test analyzation of any video. So I go to create a new video. And when I go to create a new video, they'll say, well, Cindy, where do you want to get this video from? Oh, let's see, YouTube, Con, Nat Geo, Ted Ed. My son thought that stood for Ted as Turner. I'm like, no, it's technology education design. So I went to Nat Geo, and I found this one called Catfish. Ooh, face off of the deadly predator, that might be cool. So if you're talking about predator and prey, that would be good to, that would be good to grab. And then once you grab, I'm going to go ahead and show you the one I grabbed. I grabbed uh, this Catfish versus Bat. Now, if you see catfish versus bat, who do you think is going to win that one? Right? It's astounding. It's a great video. So what you can do is you can now crop it, because in the beginning they always say, brought to you by Nat Geo, blah, blah, and you got 30 seconds of kids going, huh? So you can cut that off at the beginning with the scissors. Then you can add audio where the video pauses and said, what do you think is going to happen next? Let's predict. Is, is predator or prey? Then you can add audio notes, and then you can also add a quiz to the, to the video. You can, have a, you can make a class inside of Edpuzzle and shoot it out to them that way, and it's awesome. So we're going to try and play this and see what happens, as long as i got time, as long as I'm going to yank off the stage. So basically what happens is this bat swoops down, and I have no sound, which is disappointing. But he swoop, swoops down and he catches the catfish. And I'm like, that's cool. But then the catfish gets him at the end because he kind of like falters out and he's bait too. All right, that's that puzzle. So, multimedia category, we have... A bee funky. Oh, come on. <laughs> and we have Ed Puzzle. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, good. In our next category, we have digital storytelling. I'm up first. Oh, excellent. Oh, the bat's going to get the catfish. It's so cool. <laughs> I almost want to see that. I know. You'll have to watch it later. I guess so. All right. So we're going to move on. You all see a little item in your, on your seat when you came in with a little QR code and a quail. And you probably went, what the heck is that all about? Well, I'm sharing called TalesOfThings.com. How many of you have heard of this? No one. Fantastic. 
Basically, what you can do is you can either create collections of images and tell stories about them. So I can go ahead and pull up uh, Yates Mill Old Bottle Display here, and you'll see, I hope, I hope, that it's basically a long tail story. So somebody's uploaded an image, Im an image here and added the text, and this can be done collaboratively. And then you can move on to the next uh, slide in that particular uh, flow of information. However, Everything has a story to tell according to detailsofthings.com. And so what you can do is you can actually create a thing. I have created Quincy, the QR code scanning quail. Um, so we, that's what you have in front of you. And Quincy is not able to go to conferences like this one, right? But he wants to learn about education and technology. So he's asking that you've been to some great sessions, right? Everybody's been to some fantastic sessions t today, yesterday. Take some notes in those sessions. Share it by scanning that QR code and adding your tail. There is an application that you can use, or you can just use a plain old QR code scanner. And what you end up with is a collection of notes from everyone in the room about the sessions that they went to. You can add this to any item, just put a QR code on it and, and scan away. If you don't want to use the QR codes, they give you a link. So you end up with this tale. This is one that I did a while ago, actually. So you see that these are titles of sessions that people went to and they're sharing their notes. So you can create long tail stories using talesofthings.com. And you can add pictures and video and all kinds of wonderful things with this. It's 100% free to use. You do have to have, sign up for an account to do so. Uh, but once you do and you create that thing or that collection, you can then um, share out that QR code, put it on something. It kind of becomes a flat Stanley in th uh, a 3D kind of world. It's, it's kind of neat. So um, that is talesofthings.com. I'm doing SoundCloud. I love this app. Um, it's an app, it's also online, um, and so this is, oh, gee, that's right, you used this, didn't you? I did use that. Yeah, mm-hmm. Um, okay. It's your account. It's my account, yep. you're right. Okay, that's right. So, um, what, what's so cool about this is, on the app, all you have to do is have your iPad or your iPhone or your any type of device, and all you have to do is hit record. You hit record, and it will share the sounds. <laughs> F E T C. So, you're done with that. I can't really see, but you can you can edit it, do whatever you want to do, and you can just save it. And what's nice is it automatically goes up to your SoundCloud. You don't have to plug in this. You don't have to do any downloading. It will automatically go up to your SoundCloud. Okay, so I can post it right away, and it will go all the way up. And once it once it posts, then you can go in and you can add comments along the way. So different people when they add a comment, their little picture shows up. What's really cool is musicians are using this all over the world. And I'm sure all of you know who Paul McCartney is. And he has a SoundCloud. And what he does is he puts his new stuff up there before it's released. And you can then comment on his stuff so he can get feedback right away. So if you can look down here, there's little pictures, you know? Those little pictures are people that have, ad, uh, that have asked stuff. Eric Whitaker, anyone know who he is? Who I'm just in love with. It's the guy that did the YouTube videos of 2,000 people singing. If you haven't seen that, it will blow your minds away. He has that, he puts his stuff up early so people can see it. And then on top of it, it's totally embedded. embedded and I love that you can put it on any device and it goes right up. My girlfriend's using it in first and second grade on the little, at the end of the day, they do a little thing of what they did in music class. And then it goes right up to the web. You can put it private, you, so you can send it out private, or you can keep it public. And it has all the sound waves to it. And that is SoundCloud. It's free. And that is our multimedia section. So, SoundCloud. <laughs> Talesofthings.com. Lots of toss up. Okay, to the judges. Well, how am, I, so how am I supposed to compete with beatboxing over here? I mean, really. <laughs> really. And our last one is <laughs> Audio support. Audio support. Audio support. Who's up? You go ahead. Me and me. Me and Carlos. Oh, Carlos is good? I don't know. I guess not. Maybe not. Let me find it. Bonus. Ooh. <coughs> All right. This is an oldie, but a goodie. Vocaroo. So no, I'm good. I'm not going to. Okay. We're good. So, um, <clears throat> kids have lots to say, right? And sometimes we want to remember what they say. But we don't always have devices that we can use available to us. 
However, if you have a microphone, one computer, web connection, go to Vocaroo, the easiest possible way to record students' thoughts, ideas, text, whatever you want, online. Click to record, first time, you'll get a permission box, can I use your microphone? Click yes, off you go. Let your kids say what they want, save the files, you can download them to your computer, then you can upload them to if you have a class website, so you can start a class uh, podcast. If you want to record your kids reading and work on their fluency, have partners come to the site, one kid reads and records, the other one listens, then they trade their papers and mark it up to see where the things are that don't really make sense when they're reading. Completely free, very easy to use. Possibilities of using sound in your classroom are endless. This is the easiest way, one of the easiest ways to get that into your classroom and make it work with your kids. Awesome. All right, and the last one that we are sharing in this category, I believe, we may get that bonus, we'll see, is called Audio Sauna, which I'm not seeing at the moment, so I may have to repull that up. All right. So here is Audio Sauna. It is an application that you can either download or you can use directly online. Who was in here to hear the opening music that we had at the very beginning? Okay, that was created using Audio Sauna uh, by my children, who are eight and ten years old. And uh, I put them in front of it and I said, "Go!" And they started working with it and they ended up creating that two-minute little segment in about an hour. And I'll show you how they did this. So they go into Open Studio at Audio Sauna. And it takes just a moment to load. And I believe there's an app that does work on Chromebooks as well. And once you're in, you see you've got a great keyboard, right? Right there. And all you have to do is type on the keyboard or uh, hit with the mouse, and it will play. Unfortunately, I don't have audio either. We can sing. We can sing. OK. Well, Excellent. <laughs> but I'm not recording anything yet. So I can go to my pencil tool. And down here somewhere, where is it? I should have, I can't see it, hello. There should be a recording panel down at the bottom, which I can't see. Why can't I see it? It's a weird resolution, so I can't, uh, can't see it. I'm sorry? I'm trying, it's not doing it. Right, so like this, you you see what I'm doing here, right? I'm using the pencil tool just to put it in. Then I can add on top of that synthesizer, and I can pick other instruments here, and I can add in on that panel some notes. It should just work by playing it, but for whatever reason, it's not because I can't get down to the record button. It's going to actually record all of that, and I can also add in a sampler. And you see I've got lots of different channels here. And every single one of these buttons moves. So every single button does something. Okay, so here's my, here's my uh, drum pad. Just move that over and add some music here. And now if I could get down to the control panel, which I can't see here, I'd be able to record that and save it as a WAV file. So those of you, again, worried about copyright, have your students create. This is a fantastic tool. And they only did, my, my kids only did one little stanza, and this was like Friday night. They only did one section here, but then they took and they selected from, I know I'm out of time, from here, and just copied and pasted their 10 seconds that they did, and it turned into a two-minute piece of audio that you heard on your way in, which I'll play again later, I think. So that is our audio support. We have... Bookaroo and audiosauna.com. I knew playing the kid card would work. Yes. Bringing kids in, you automatically win. Nice. Audio sauna. So, all right. So, in conclusion, we have for you to take home with you and share out the biggest user with everybody. This is the website. So, if you put down somewhere or take a picture with your camera, linky with two eyes.com slash biggest user and on the left hand side are all of our names and if you click on one of the names or any of them you'll see a little blurb for each one of our awesome pre uh, presentations so even though our official winners are Kahoot, Samore, Code.org, Edpuzzle, SoundCloud and Audiosana the rest are worthy also.
Questions, comments, concerns? Did you learn anything? Yeah. All right. So, so wait, Cindy. What? Yes, who's, Jim? Who, who's the biggest user? Well, they are. Yay! And with that being said, we still have some time left. Does anybody have an amazing app that they would like to share? Or a website? Anyone? Yes. Karen. Nice. Spell it again. Zoom. Zoo? Zoom. Z? In zoom, zoom. Zoom. I did that. Dot com. I did that. Is that U.S.? Oh, there's always one thing doesn't work. All right, U.S. Let's check it out, Karen. Zoomus. Well, if, if Karen said and says it's hot, it's hot. Why go to me? Let's zoom. Video conferencing. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Nice. Any other apps? Oh, that's cool. One more. Graphite.org. Love it. I just learned about it. All right, what is it? Graphite.org. G-R-A-P-H. Graphite. Dot org. Cool. Awesome. And what That's is so nice. fantastic about that is that you're not trying to jam a tool into Common Core. You're starting with what you're supposed to be doing in the first place, and it helps you just to integrate it right in smoothly. Purpose. 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 Absolutely. Anyone else? Um, go formative. Go formative. It's good to see you, Danielle. Nope. GoFormative.com. And it's free. It is free. It's free? Yeah, US. Awesome. Yeah. All right, so GoFormative.com. Sweet. We got some more. Whatever. Go ahead. C-E-L.Y. C E L C E C E L dot L Y. Dot L Y. Oh. I'm a little uh okay. all right, say it again. C E L dot L Y. I'm getting the list up because we're gonna put it up on the Yep. Yeah, we'll add these to the website. So don't everybody think like I can't write this fast. <laughs> so tell me again oh, what it does? Nice. Less than students, you use our cell phone numbers and you're able to have curated captions in the class to do quizzes and their cell phone match announcements. I'm in love. Yeah. That's awesome. That's neat. You guys are proving mm. that you're the biggest users out there. Who else? Yeah. Totally all, you, you're schooling us. Lucy. I said, I said, you're yeah. mm -hmm. Remind. Here's Remind. Just Remind.com. Remind.com. What's it called? Front row. Front row. Front row. Front row. In the front. Thank you, Bob. You can. <laughs> I never sat in the front row, so yeah, I, I, I could hardly spell it. Right. Differentiated math Ooh, instruction. Cool. I can finally learn math. There's hope. Yes. Photo math. Okay. Well, so you go to the computer. Exactly. <laughs> right. All right, yeah. we're done. We're done. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Thank you. A lot of fun. I hope you yes. had fun, too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Don't forget to